the guru of Squad Double Zero, the assassin like no other. Yes, I'm the best at what I do. Cut, cut the intro, cut it, cut it, cut it. This is another Hulk Mode production where the cold hard truth is back with a sense of realism, evidence, and facts. Ladies and gentlemen, Unfamiliar with Hulk mode. I don't hold back. I just say what needs be said against a bunch of BS and foolishness. Ridiculousness going on out here. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gents. How is it that people can be involved in the series for so long and yet be so clueless and idiotic? Pure and simple. Clueless and idiotic. Ignorance no longer is acceptable. How is it that people are so biased against certain things which haven't even had a chance to play out? Now, I'm not going to say you got to like everything. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying you have to be all buddy buddy. Woo! I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is you have to put the respect where it's due. Or at least give it a chance to play out. Before you come and jump on it. And in this specific situation, we're talking about the seven Chichibukai in the series of One Piece. In the One Piece world. Ladies and gentlemen, he is fodder, booty, trash, whatever you want to bootleg, whatever you want to consider him. Because you don't like his character design. Oh my gosh. I, I didn't even know what was going on last week. This video is supposed to come out, right? And I'm hearing people have upset over the chapter because of the of the character design. I mean, overall, the chapter was was accepted, even though it was the same quality as much of what been going on in Dressrosa. But that's none of my business, though. Anyways, we continue. So it was accepted, except for the Seven Shichibukai. Now I'm not coming out here and say it was the greatest design ever, but this is a beautiful thing with Oda, because. Last time I checked, Blackbeard Marshall D. Teach. Now, some people have a problem with his design. A lot of people love the character. But this dude's design, this midget white beard, aka Whitebeard Jr., Edward Nubu, or Weeble, excuse me, Edward Weeble. I was combining Newgate and, and Weeble. Midget Whitebeard. He just like Blackbeard. Just kind of like Luffy. Oda does this, and it's different from other series, where manga, because sometimes they be like, what the hell is going on? It's not because it's One Piece, it's because One Piece, Oda does this intentionally. He makes wacky, weird-looking characters. Not only beastly, but he shapes and he makes you think, if you are willing to actually think. Because, like, let's keep it real. In reality, some of the most talented, some of the most powerful, some of the best individuals aren't the greatest looking, most handsome, most beautiful, most this and that, physically attractive. That's reality, ladies and gentlemen. Some of the most intelligent. I'm not saying Weeble obviously is not intelligent at this moment, but that's reality. Where does being the most powerful indicate that one has to be physically attractive? I'll wait. I'll wait. Seriously. You know what's so killer is that a lot of these dudes, you gotta start, it's a bit suspect to say that. You, you gotta start questioning some of these sexuality. Now, we'll, some will find, oh, where should there be a problem with the sexuality? That's a whole nother issue for a whole nother day. Not saying, you know, being homophobic or anything, but you gotta question because, look, who cares? At the end of the day, who cares about his character design? He ain't coming in one piece, at least. Pretty sure oh, One Piece ain't hyped up because of character designs. Come on now. One Piece's main concern ain't about character designs. Come on now. I mean, look at the tyrant Bartholomew Kuma. A lot of <laughs> make talk about him. Don Chinjo, Blackbeard. Some of these dudes got midget legs. Like, their legs make no sense. You had Gekko Mori. I mean, you got all kinds of designs out here for characters. Yet. When, when a new dude is introduced, 
That's the issue. Now, look here. Look here. If this dude was whack, I'd be the first to tell you. If he was a whopper, okay, then, then we could start talking. But he's not. This dude, first and foremost, had, before he was sealed as the Shichibu Kai, 480 million berry bounty. Someone are trying to diminish and say that's not important. 480 million berries? What is this dude been doing? This is before he became a Shichibu Kai. 480. We know what Luffy went through to get his 500 mil. 480. Are you serious right now? And we ain't heard nothing about this dude the entire series. He ain't been no Dracula Hawkeyes and Mihawk. He ain't been some of these other legends. He seems relatively young. Mind though. I know that we just got into the new world, but seriously, what has this dude been doing? I mean, Blackbeard sailed on the seas for decades, had a zero bounty. This dude had a 480 million berry bounty. It seems like he does things solo dolo. You had Admiral Kizaru Borsellino get his dude the ultimate. He says his power, his strength and power, they're comparable to the mere strength of a young Edward Nugget. Later. The Yonko Black, I mean, Yonko Whitebeard, excuse me. Now, that could be one of multiple things. That could mean before he got the Google, before he got the Quick Quick Devil Fruit. We don't know when he got it. Or that could mean, you know, it could be simply physical strength. It could be Prime Whitebeard. Now, I don't think that's the indication. Or it could mean Young Newgate back before he had the Whitebeard. I, I'm not sure which it's indicating. But regardless, the dude's ridiculous. He's rocking the Basento, the same weapon that Whitebeard was rocking. The dude has the Whitebeard. You know, a lot of people are counting him off as a son. He's, it's a possibility that he's a son. I mean, last time I checked, Luffy doesn't even really look like Monkey D. Dragon. Come on now. Like, let's keep it real. He looks like Goldie, uh, Goldie Roger. He looks like Ace's brother. Let, let's keep it real. For the longest time, I thought Roger was Luffy's father. Seriously. Seriously. Look at Dragon and look at Luffy. Barely any any recon recognizability. Ace and Roger, okay. So I don't look anything. I know he's a grandson, but I didn't look like Don Chin, yeah. You go on and on. Get my point? Dragon kind of looks like Gar. Kind of. But eh, I said I move up, but eh. But you get the point. This dude, not only this, Weeble, right? Midget Whitebeard. He's been coming after Whitebeard's lower uh, divisions and the Whitebeard Pirates lower division and the doggone allies. He's taking out 16 of these dudes already. He's dropping civilians. He doesn't care. Oh, Oda doesn't kill. This dude casually took it. In, in, in the clash took out 600 folks 600 civilians like it was nothing this dude doesn't seem like he has any scar now it does look like he's stitched up that may be scarred some people are saying gecko mori is involved eh, that's questionable look ladies and gentlemen he doesn't look like whitebeard so it's not whitebeard's body okay and plus even the whole shadow thing it from what we could gather with reunion you still keep the person's personality he didn't take, Ryuma didn't take Brooke's personality, so keep, keep that in mind, okay? This dude is a massive threat, pure and simple. You don't have to like him, but you gotta respect him. I mean, I don't happen to like certain characters, don't. Sengoku post times get, getting better for me, Oda's improving for me, but I don't like Garp, I don't like Whitebeard, but I respect them, I respect their position, I respect the power in the story. You saying? Same thing with Gecko Moria. I don't really like Gecko Moria so much. But I respect him. Seriously. You gotta understand this, ladies and gentlemen. Don't bring your bias into what a character brings to the table. Because what a character brings to the table is objective. Not your subjective feelings and views toward the character. That's not fair. And that's just denying fact. That's denying evidence. 
that's being illogical and irrational. This is downright stupid. Also, let's keep in mind that somebody uh, in a comment, I, forget, I didn't read the entire comment, but somebody was right. In a comment I, I came across, I don't know if it was a King of, Light, a King of Lightning's video, the phone 999s, I, I forget which video I was watching. But, maybe Kobe Rider, I don't remember. Somebody compared Weeble at this point to Majin Buu. You're know, talking about the fat Majin Buu, you know what I'm saying? Uh, eventually good, you know, before he was good Buu, separated from good and evil and all that. He's right. The whole Bobbity situation, uh, this mother character, supposed beloved of Whitebeard. Now, it is possible that she honestly was, and since she money hungry and ain't worried about family, except, you know, how to use, then it is possible, even though the size is really off, maybe that's part of the reason why we were so small compared to Whitebeard, but it is possible that that's why Whitebeard could not have a, a long-term relationship. Yes, it is possible that he literally is Whitebeard's son. It is a possibility. Unlikely, because of the whole self-proclaim, but it is still a possibility. It is. You cannot count it out as a 100% fact that he's not. Because I know a lot of y'all gonna go, Oh, it's BS. How can white be son? It doesn't matter. It's a son. I mean, he's got the features. And not only that, this dude's rocking golden line Shiki's kind of hair. Have y'all noticed that in the back, though? Seriously. So, who knows? And, look, power such as this, we've seen it a lot of times. I'm not saying it's completely genetic. But genetics have a huge part. Dragon, Luffy. Garp, the, the monkey family. Okay, we've seen what Ace and, and Roger. We've seen doggone Usopp's eyesight. Father Yasop, the sniper. We've seen the genetics get passed down there. We've seen Nico Robin uh, from Nico Oliv uh, Olivia. The intelligence game. Okay, you, you get my drift. Some of this stuff is genetic. It's been passed down. And if this dude is as devastating as may seem, you got this. Now, not only that, I gotta take into consideration one more element. Who is trying to go after? He wants. He he has a grudge. He has no qualms going after Yonko, Blackbeard, Marshall D. Teach. No qualms whatsoever. The world government has no strings on this cat, man. They can't control this dude. They made him a Shichi Yukai so they didn't have to face him. Seriously, that's the only reality of the situation. They don't want to go against this kind of guy. He's devastating. And not only that, this dude, no qualms ready to go against Marco the Phoenix? It's the most powerful people in one piece. This dude, no sense of the world fear. And you could call him stupid or whatever. But look, man, if he is like Majin Buu, which it seems very likely at this point, it is a good thing that he's being semi-controlled at this point. Because let her die or be gone, this dude's a massive problem. Or let him get pissed off and see what happens. See what happens. The world could literally easy global threat, possibly, potentially. Again, we all know, you know, full blown with this dude. And he's coming to talk to Luffy or battle Luffy. We'll see. And once again, this just, Luffy has connections, whether it be pro, uh, neutral, or antagonistic toward every former, potential, and current. Shichibukai. I'll break it down quickly. Ace. Possibility. He turned it down. Luffy's brother. Brother. Older brother. Uh, you got Dracula, Hawkeye's Mihawk. Kind of on a neutral playing field. You know, him and Luffy and then the Shanks. And they, they got a connection. Uh, Sir Crocodile. Luffy was antagonistic. Then he became neutral. You know, they had the whole impel down, battle and everything back on Alabasta. Buggy, formerly the clown, now the star clown, uh, you know, once antagonistic, then neutral on the side of helping Luffy, same thing with uh, Sir Crocodile, so they got that relationship, Luffy fighting back uh, at Orange Town, then the whole Impel Down situation, uh, 
Bo Hancock, clearly pro, she loves him. Um, let's see. Surgeon of Death, Trafalgar Law, or Waterlog, I didn't want to say it. D. Waterlog, excuse me. Um, clearly an ally of Luffy. Uh, let's see. Pro Luffy. Let's see. Who else? Jim Bay, pro Luffy. Um, teach, antagonistic to Luffy. They got that bond. They've been in that, that relationship. Doflamingo, clearly antagonistic. He just took him down. Um, who else? It's about everybody. Eh? Gecko Moria, antagonistic at this point. Took him down. Um, I know there's about 11. But y'all get my drift. And now it seems to be about to be antagonistic with Weeble at this point. We shall see how the encounter really goes down fully. But y'all catch my drift. It's ludicrous just to be on a character. Now, I've judged him on character design, but again, this is Oda. Oda ain't like your typical manga cook. He ain't like your typical author. He can make the wackiest characters into important and non cliche. I'd expect the one to like, comment, subscribe, tell me your thoughts. It's, it's, my thoughts are simple, okay? Until this guy proves to be whack, which is highly unlikely, and when have we seen a weak Shishibu card? Then don't disrespect him, pure and simple. Am I a fan of the character design? Not really. But it, again, it reminds me of Blackbeard and Luffy's. So I'm okay with it. It's all odd. But, okay. It's One Piece. The One Piece world had some strange creatures and characters. Did you check out Kaido? A lot of y'all are hyped on Kaido. Kaido's design was manly, but it wasn't epic. I mean, it threw, threw it off a little bit. I mean, what's with the magma kind of magma kind of shoulder? He's big. He's got okay. He's got like this judo or uh, sumo kind of belt. He's this big dude. Um, what is he? Who knows? Maybe of the same kind of race species that Oars is and Oars Jr. Who knows? Mm -hmm. But I mean, he's, he does have a manly face, but it's nothing overall. He's nothing. He's just strange. Okay, you can name plenty of strange characters. You get my drift. Peace.